My Mac Podcast 902. Who's next? Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's My Team, My Mac Podcast 902. Yes, we've We've dropped a little over the last few weeks, but that's because, well, it's probably my fault for not being here. But anyway, let's get on to some Apple stuff. While Tim Cook, Mr. Excitement, has been the CEO (laughs) of Apple for over 10 years now, he's now getting closer to his mid-60s. And he's probably looking past where he'll be running things. His legacy is pretty firmly set, although I think he wants a car. And there's not much more at this point he could do, apart from a car. So who will be the next to... I I won't start that all again, but so who will be next in line to run Apple? We'll look at some of the likely candidates in the second section. Hey, Guy. Long time no speak. There we go. Yeah, it has has been a long time between... Me being in the hospital, you being on walkabouts, uh, Carl being just too available every too time. Available. That we, too, too available. Too available every time yeah. that, that we need him yeah. to. And I'm kidding, of course. Thank you, Carl, for for coming on last time. And it was very much at the last minute. I really, really do appreciate it. Check him and his cohorts out over at the Mac and Forth podcast, which you can find yes, in most. Guys. Yes, Finer guys, we are, gonna get, we, are, we are going to get some of his cohorts on at some point in the future. I, we will definitely get Nibsy on and well, I can't remember Scottish the other one now. Jim. Sorry, no, no, wrong one. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, wrong one, guy. <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying that that's Nipsey. I'm saying we'll get Scottish Jim on also. Yeah, but he's nothing to do with Mac and Forth. <laughs> Who's he to do with? I'm very confused. <laughs> You are confused. Anyway, <laughs> yes, we, we shall get the Mac and Forth guys on. Don't don't you worry. Um, or we'll just yes. take over his show. No, no, I don't want to do that. That'll upset him. And well, I, kind you, of I, like what we did. What happened? At, no, uh, the I don't show. want to upset him because he's a lot closer to me than you are, and he's still as big as you are, if not bigger. So, oh, he's a gentle giant, just like me. Yeah, he's a really yeah. super nice guy. He'll run me over in his van. Um, <laughs> And then call it an accident. I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry about that. Yes. Anyway, what have you been doing? Now, now summer apparently is almost over. Not. Yeah. Summer is almost over. I'm I'm not going to. It's not. It's so bright and hot and sunny here. I'm going to put my sunglasses on. (laughs) Oh, I thought that was because your future was so bright. Oh, you're right. You're right. It is. The future's bright. The future's ginger, not orange. And the future is hot. Um, yeah, summer is almost over, and I can't say it was a particularly good one for me this year. As most of my plans got shanghaied for one reason or another, but maybe things will turn around in the fall, Gaz. Assuming that the airlines ever get their collective asses together, uh, they have been canceling flights left and right, and I was very fortunate. And, and there was a series of unfortunate events, which somebody should write a book called that 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 was that's a brilliant name for a book i love i would love that and and, and it should be yellow kind of lemony at the same Mm. time so yes a bit like my snippets as well (laughs) yeah we can call it lemony snippets a series of unfortunate (laughs) events absolutely no way we would get sued over that at at all no at all no at all no never happened so and Honest, that was completely off the cuff, guys. That was yeah, just, that, guy, thumbs up, guy, guys. Guy, guy, don't let yeah. the secrets out. Just, okay. just run with it. Just run. With I know. It. I, I just like getting credit. No, you know, I don't. I don't want people to think everything is like so scripted that we've God, got all these what? great jokes. Scripted in here. us. I know. You're kidding. There are things in here that we do read, but for the most part, it's it's just mayhem. It is mayhem at my Mac Central almost every single week. <laughs> As even if, tell, not, even as if you, neither as, one of us are here. As as you can tell from the fact that Guy thought that Mac Jim was on the Mac and Paul show. <laughs> He's not? <laughs> so, uh, okay. All right. All right. You, 
Where does Mac Jim come into all of this? It doesn't matter. Just move on, will you? Okay. Okay. That's well, between o- the hospital, that's guys visit- OCD kicking in. Is it? Is it really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It is. So <laughs> between the hospital, the only thing I, I got te- to do this. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, guy. I've got to say, I can tell you've not had therapy therapy for a few weeks. It has been a few weeks. <laughs> so I'm on medication. Yeah. <laughs> That they've got me on medication, not necessarily because I needed therapy, though that would be an excellent reason as well. Yeah. Uh, blood pressure, blood pressure medicine. And I'm still trying to get used to it, and I find myself falling. So if I see your head dropping, then I've oh. just, I, I just got to run with it until you wake up. Okay. Yeah, well, or just throw out like a, a train whistle. Or okay. Don't you have that train noise? Uh, probably somewhere. somewhere. You 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 yeah. can ask me to find it now. Aren't no, you? no, thing. I'm not. No, 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 no. Don't find it. If if you see me nodding off, then just okay. I'll just gotta do wake it. me yeah. back up. Yeah, I've got to find it now so I know where to go when I see <laughs> your head dropping. The um, <laughs> I was very fortunate that uh, none of my flights were canceled either to Chicago or from Chicago. Uh, there one of them was late, and this is weird. I think I talked about this. The flight got moved from one terminal to another, and that's always fun, without any announcements made. So there was basically, it was getting close to time to board the plane. It was just me and this this other woman that were like in the gate that we'd started at looking at each other going, something's not right here. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. that's when somebody basically came by and said, hey, dumbasses, it's over at that gate over there. So we had to rush over to the other gate. But we get onto the plane. We're like 45 minutes late getting onto the plane because they couldn't cool it down enough for human occupation. Right. And so, but we finally get on the plane and we're taxiing out to the runway and they shut the airport down because some freaking idiot was flying a drone near the airport. And there's built in software in drones that's supposed to prevent that from happening, but apparently not for this drone. (laughs) So I hope they caught the guy because that added like, I mean, it literally no flights took off. No flights were able to land for like 45 minutes while all this was going on. Wow. So much fun. Um, But I'm not going to go over the whole thing with Mac stock again. No, uh, no. Although I do have a question for you, which we were starting to have a bit of a conversation with before the show started, folks. Um, And I wanted to carry this this conversation on during the show because I wanted to see Guy's reaction. And my question to him was, um, Guy, why don't you just go to MacStock one year and don't take any equipment and just enjoy the whole experience? Oh, was that directed to me? <laughs> yes, Guy, it was. How can I answer this distinctly? No. <laughs> no. That's you should. not what I do. You should. You should. People would I saw like- the whole show this week or this week, this year. <laughs> yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. I did. Just try it. And- try it next year, guy. Try it. Just go. <sighs> don't take any equipment at all. You know, go for it. One year for the Macworld Expo, I went minimum. All I took was an iPad and a Bluetooth keyboard. And I was able to get everything done at the Macworld Expo that I, I mean, it took me two to three times as long, but I got everything done at the Macworld Expo that I would normally do. And it was mostly an experiment to see if I could. Um, Mac stock for whatever reason, I keep coming up with like new mobile Excuse. podcasting Excuses. stuff. Yeah. Excuses. And then I never get to use it. C, C. I, I I took it out one time the whole time I was this entire setup with three cameras and two microphones and everything else that I condensed into a single backpack. I showed it to uh, Dave Ginsburg in touch with iOS podcast in his hotel room for like 10 minutes and then packed everything back up and, and put it back into the backpack and took it back to my room where it stayed until I left. <laughs> Washington, D.C. I think Whoops. there's a lesson learned there, Guy. Anyway, anyway, yeah. I am finally back. Forced to my... Mike to give me a table to put all we... of my stuff on. That's we... the lesson. 
Will you let me finish? Um, yes. I, I, I am finally back from my walkabout. We have done uh, a total of just over 30, 37% of the total Welsh coastal path. Um, no, no, that's, wow. that's not that's not true, actually. I'm lying. That's 30%, 37% of Anglesey, which is part of the Welsh coastal path. But uh, as everybody in the UK know, Ang- knows, Anglesey is an, a little island off the Welsh coast, joined by two bridges. Pretty spectacular. Um, joined by about- two bridges and your dog. And we've and we've done about fifteen percent in total of the Welsh coastal path, which is about one hundred and thirty miles or so. So it's going pretty well. Thoroughly enjoyed it. The first couple of sections were quite quite boring, if I'm honest. Uh, the walk out of Chester to start off with to Flint, which is a, a place on the um, the north, really north uh, Welsh coast, is very industrial section, which has its own. Um, enjoyment, but yeah. charm, charm. Mm, no, uh, not so much. And, and Flint has a castle, and that's really where we started to enjoy it a little bit more. However, from Prestatyn through to pretty much Landudno, it's pretty much promenading, and that was hard on our feet, guy. Blimey, really Wait hard on our feet. See, I understood the first two big words. I don't know what promenading means. Oh, you don't know what a promenade is. So on in, no. in in Britain, a lot of seaside towns have what they call the promenade, which is um, the town is built along the coastline um, on a fairly flat area. And the promenade in front of it is like a big walkway where everybody oh, used to okay. promenade. Up and All right, up we call way. those boardwalks here. No, yeah, promenade. promenade. Okay, yes. so proper, for people the proper, in the U.S. who couldn't figure out what a promenade is... The promenade is a proper word. <laughs> so is, and boardwalk does not have a U in it, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and board, boardwalk for me has got wood. This is not wood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was quite tough, but then it, it started to get really interesting. We started to get into some of the hills and uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Two weeks of, of walking. The dog got very, very tired on occasion. Um, Did you have to tired. carry him a lot? No, no, I didn't carry him at all. No, no. But uh, there were times when we'd stop. Initially, you see, he was out on a walk and he really enjoyed that. So whenever we stopped, he was sniffing around and keeping on his feet and being all active. And then after a few days, he thought, I, there's a reason that they're resting and sitting down and having lunch. I think I should do that as well. So he'd then suddenly lay down and, you know, have his drink and his, his food and, and have a bit of a rest. But there was one <laughs> there was one particularly long session where we were on these not jaggedy rocks, but they weren't it wasn't exactly smooth. And there was like an angled rock at about it was about 30 degrees, I suppose, and, and like a double slope. But he just laid down on it and went poof. <laughs> That'll do. I'm, I'm sleeping done. for a bit. I'm done. <laughs> uh, but it was How good. Dare it was you. Good. Yeah, and then obviously I continue to use my um, my Ordnance Survey app, which I did a whole session on previously, still using that. But also the Welsh Coastal Path have got a, an app, uh, which records oh, nice. some of your, your walk. And I think this is not actually a problem just with the Welsh Coastal Path app, but it's, it's a, a problem with tracking apps, especially GPS tracking apps uh, in particular, and that is... If you want them to track you, you kind of have to leave your phone on with the screen on as well. They can't track you when you, like, turn the phone off. You know, although you've got that as the app in the background, as soon as you click the, you know, the off button so that your screen's not visible and, you know, it's in your pocket so you could touch something on that screen and stop it recording, for example, um, they then just track the point that you're on and then the next point when you wake it up again. And that's really, really frustrating because obviously having leaving the screen on, which wasn't a problem, I got a way around it, but it meant that you've got to turn the brightness down because if you're using that app and the screen's up bright, then, um, then it's using juice. And if you're out walking for quite a long time, that juice will go down. And then the next problem is if you're outside and it's bright, and you've turned the screen down, you then can't, can't see the damn thing. So you've <laughs> got to find the brightness level, which is in, in itself quite difficult to turn it up. So, um, yeah, I think I should have perhaps got some shortcuts and some Hey series to turn the screen up 
um, which I'm well, not doing. Do, do these apps have anything that will let you like tell it to not track in between points and just wait until you know, like a, a time limit every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes to wake well, up. No, and- the problem, the problem is when you're, when you're doing the coastal path within five minutes, you could have done a 90 degree turn and gone somewhere, you know, which, else. Some, well, not somewhere else It's of course somewhere else, but somewhere a, further along. But actually if you woke it up every 10, five, whatever the, 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 the period is, it would then just zip to that point, which could be straight across the sea, for example. Cause yeah, you but go I mean, right it's got in there and out again. It's got the GPS location of the path itself. So could, well, couldn't it just assume, well, you were on this power, the path. Yeah. At this yeah. Well, point. I, well, that's, that's, that's down to coding. I think that's probably yeah. more difficult than just saying track me when I'm live. Uh, and so, and if there's anyone out there that knows a, there's a setting that I've not hit correctly, because I did do a bit of searching to try and find, um, find if there was something which I wasn't doing right, but I couldn't find it either in the apps or, or in the my settings, but if anybody knows what I'm doing wrong, then please let me know. Um, because having the screen on all the time has its downsides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think that would be that would I mean it, it. That would be, I think, a good feature to where it knows you're on the path. You know. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It basically the app is like, okay, well, you're going to take this path. Yeah, and if and if it if it knows r- the rough time and it's gone and it can then register the fact that you've gone from this point to this point in plus or minus this period of time, it knows you then walking that selection, you know. So, and if you're using the app to track yourself on a on a particular path, then you know it, it must work out the fact that you've probably followed the path. Yeah, um, and, and there would be it, one I, other thing you'd have to add, which would be like to, to a little buzzer, not a buzzer, but like to, a vibration. If for mm-hmm. some reason it wakes up and it can't find where you are in the path or it, it can't see a yeah. GPS thing so that yeah, you're yeah, aware yeah. of it. That never happened at all. Um, I, coverage is, was pretty, pretty good. Even in where I've had coverage, which has been almost non-existent, the Ordnance Survey map has still been able to follow me. So, you know, it, it's obviously doing some, some calculations and some tracking, which um, – still gives it a rough a pretty good rough idea of where you are so anyway yeah. that was that was quite good that was quite good so i think i i mean i did have quite a few weeks worth of of snippets guy so this next section could have been about four hours long however <laughs> i decided i decided when i got just home last yesterday. week guess yeah, just yeah, last yeah, i just decided that maybe <laughs> i should just look at last week's because you may have covered a lot of the stories there is one or two which may be a little bit further back but i wanted to keep them in so we are now guy gonna hit gazzy snippets <laughs> nice um okay the first one apparently an iphone has been reunited with its owner um, 10 months after being lost in the river. Now, there's some pictures of this particular item, um, and it does look pretty awful when it's come back. Um, and it says, while we've all heard horror stories of someone losing a phone, we don't usually hear of any happy endings. However, one British man found himself reunited with his lost iPhone 10 months after dropping it in a river. Now, I'm just going to see if I can go to this story. Because my snippets are all snippets, exactly. Yeah. Well, I imagine that there's there's an image of an EMT with like those heart paddles going clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he, they're talking to the guy, and it got lots of pictures on it. Um, he didn't think that the, the phone would come back to life, but it does look like it was fished back out of the water. I can't see the bit where it said uh, um, uh, where it says uh how it was found um it, it basically have got some pictures i think which were actually on its phone uh and it recharged and so it's just absolutely incredible absolutely incredible um 10 months in a river still working so you know people you pay a lot of money for these devices but there's a reason and, there, and it's nice when you're you know you get something back from that it's like well if i happen to be do something stupid and drop my phone into a river 10 months from now i might get it back 
<laughs> That's what if I you would get it back. Do. If you get, yeah, yeah. There's always a positive. Anyway, apparently there were hundreds queuing for the opening of the Apple Brompton Road store, which I know that your co-host last week went to have a look. Whether he was he queuing at the start or not, I don't know. I can't remember whether he did or whether he just went to the store a bit later in the day. Um, apparently, French app developers um, sue Apple over Apple Store fees. Shocker. That's all I'm going to say on that. Shocker. Yeah. Apple, Apple TV oh, Plus. They're suing them in California. So you've got California lawyers that are making money. They're represented by a French lawyer, obviously in France. So he's making money. And in the meantime, the developers are like, I just want to get all of the money. Char- charge more. I was going to say. Anyway, Apple TV yeah. Plus reportedly in talks for its first content made in Brazil. Excellent stuff for Apple TV Plus. Um, Apple has now dropped its face mask requirements for most of its corporate workers. Uh, most. I'm not saying who can't yet. Um, Apple Arcade removes the first batch of originals, leaving soon tab has now gone so uh we did mention this quite a few weeks ago that some of the the app, app, arcade apps were disappearing it would be nice i think to still be able to get access to some of those games though if there are games that you enjoy playing you know that have been on there i don't because i think this is apple's choice rather than you know the app developer in well are years. the games still available in the store itself or are they, they just could they gone? could well they could well be but they may not be part of arcade yeah so um anyway i mean it's it's good that they're refreshing uh apple arcade Content, but, uh, yeah. yeah that's 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 a good sign uh jetpack joyride will soon have a sequel available exclusive exclusively on apple arcade so is that the upside to the previous story's slightly downside? Um, Apple Care Plus theft and loss cover is now available in France, Italy, and Spain. You heard it here first. <laughs> Hiring trends indicates Apple plans to significantly expand its ads business. Oh, dear. Yeah, we, we actually talked a little bit about that next week. There's a Next week? Last week, sorry. There was there's a um, a large part of the screen for the iOS app store on your phone has kind of a splash page. And on the today button, I don't I can't well, I'm, I'm not gonna break out my phone and do it, but no, basically no. the like the home screen for the app store will show an advertisement. And I think the comment I made to Cara was thank goodness because Apple doesn't make enough money in services. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> sarcastically agreed no. um, apple hr mishandled mishandled serious misconduct allegations the retaliation against some women uh, a report cites 15 different women accusing apple hr of misleading serious misconduct allegations and more than half of them say that the company retaliated against them for bringing the complaints Ooh, that could be nasty if it's uh, brought to the fore. Um, do you know? Well, one of the people that know, we're going to talk know, about in the next section runs that department. Yeah, people, people services and HR always struggles. Don't know why. Uh, US hmm. patent reveals Apple Watch blood pressure sensor. Now, um, I don't, we don't normally talk about these too much, but actually, if they do bring a blood pressure sensor out on the watch, watch sales, guy. Watch the sales of the Apple Watch. Of watches. Watch It'll watch go. sales. Watches. Watch the watch sales. <laughs> Who's watching the watcher? <laughs> Apple and MLB announced the September Friday night baseball schedule. <sighs> <sighs> Apple has released the studio display firmware update to fix speaker issue. I think Carl actually mentioned this on this show that the, this, this particular product seems to have had quite a lot of problems. Yeah. It's it like, look, released. Apple just pull the damn thing back. Okay. <laughs> All the people that were stupid, I'm, I'm sorry, that wanted to get ahead of the curve and buy an overpriced monitor should be able to return them 
because they're garbage. I'm sure they look nice, but everything that you said it was going to be, and part of the reason why you charge so much effing money for them is not working. And it you can't put it all on software. Pull them back. Give people their money back for them. Improve the product. Re-release it. You put out a bum product, Apple. S- says Guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, Apple has warned suppliers about the Chinese revenge for the Pelosi meeting, and it <laughs> may affect iPhone shipments. More on that in a little bit. I'll come back to that. Yeah, okay. it may not I'll matter as that. much. As, I'll come okay. back to that. I'll come back to that. <laughs> Apple, has, <laughs> Apple removes the scam, a scam app that led to hijacked Facebook ad accounts. Dear, oh dear. There you go. Apple's cash position is plunging. <sighs> Sounds like a definite negative. However, some are saying that actually that could be an improvement. Apple's cash and short-term investments have plunged to $48 billion as, of, as of the end of June 2022. Oh, no. From $107 billion in 2019 at the end of 2019. Well, weren't they using a lot of that money to rebuy Will their you stock? let me finish? Yes. A decline of 55%. But according to a theory... Um, out of several dis- decades ago, Michael Jensen, an emeritus professor of business administration at Harvard Business School, that's a positive development for both the business and the company shareholders. Yes, now you can jump in, Guy. Didn't they use a lot of that money to buy back their stock? <laughs> Apple warns suppliers to follow the Chinese Communist Party rules on the Taiwan labeling. I think uh, there's another story coming up later. So I don't even fire. understand what that means. Hang for. Apple has asked suppliers to ensure that shipments from Taiwan to China strictly comply with Chinese customer okay. regulations after a recent visit by the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, I'll come Nancy. Back to it. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it again. Apple Card customers can get three months of Apple TV for free. Yippee doo da! <laughs> Just yippee doo da! Um, Apple TV Plus aims for Pixar highs with the launch of its first major animated field, uh, feature film, Luck. Haven't seen it. Don't know if you've I seen have. it. Yeah. Any good? It's okay. It's all okay. right. I mean, it's, yeah. visually, visually, it's 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 nice. Um, the story kind of. Uh, you know, I don't want to make it a review. Um, no, it was don't, okay. Man. Let's move it on because actually, uh, interest- it wasn't as good as like a, a top level Pixar film. I'll just okay. leave it at that. Okay. Um, I know that. Um, I think is it Blackbird uh, that's come out um, singing in the dead of night. <laughs> that's exactly what I did when someone <laughs> said to me about that. There was Blackbird <laughs> really? night singing in the dead of night. Turn to fly. fly. Anyway, oh, um, <laughs> millions of dollars. <laughs> um, anyway, that's supposed to be really good. I am, I, I am intending to watch it, but my daughters watched it and they said they watched one and then had to watch two more. Because so Blackbird. I think so it's, it's sure episodic. What yes. service is that on? Is that it's on Apple TV? Apple TV? Apple, Apple okay, TV. I'll have to yeah. check that. Let me just check that now. Make sure it is called actually Black. Bird, Apple TV. It's going to be a bit of Blackbird. It is Blackbird. <laughs> He's doing it again, isn't he? Um, any, moving on. Mm. Updated Apple Maps design expanding to Israel, Palestine, and Saudi Arabia. You heard it here first. <laughs> Yay! Now, you're probably going to jump in at this point. Major Apple uh, supplier. Wait, let, let me cover my mouth ahead of time. App, major Apple supplier TSMC is China's trump card against the U.S. and Taiwan. If strains between China and Taiwan continue to worsen, the Chinese Communist Party has a trump card threatening to cut off the island's exports, which include pro, uh, products from pivotal chip maker, a major Apple supplier, TSMC. You know what? Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. 
watch Apple just say, well, you know, we can't do business there. So uh, Foxconn, I know you got plants in Vietnam. I know we're going to have some of the mid-level iPhones made in India. Why don't we just move those plans along a little faster? How about we do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's bigger fish to fry for China than worrying about that, though, guys. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, iPad iOS 16 has been delayed, and iPhone 14 uh, Pro, there's lots of rumors about that Pro phone coming out. Um it just it was just the iPad I, uh, iOS 16 has been delayed, which I then heard that there was definitely going to be a difference between when um, iOS 16 came out and iPad OS 16 came out. And there was lots of chatter in the ecosystem well, I was be. picking up about there why there was be. such a big difference. They're, they're com at this point, they're almost completely different platforms that, that share some common apps. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because now we talk about iOS, but iOS as an operating system has many different um, branches that is being used by uh, by that base system. Yeah. Um, Apple September event. I didn't know there was a September event. Did no, it's the first time hearing it. Apparently, uh, um, there is going to be a September event accordingly. Um, iPhone 14, Apple Watch Series 8, iOS 16 release date and more. So... We'll wait and see. I've not heard anything. The rumors are out there. And you know what we talk about rumors. It's not a rumor. It's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. So um, Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I have never heard of Apple ever having a fall event that involved phones and iPads and all the rest never. of it. Never. No, I personally ever. don't think it's going to happen this year. There's going to be no September event. There's going to be ever. no new phone release this, no, this year. Yeah. And all I can say 2024, to is, that's when the all, next phone will be released. I'll tell you what, guy, all I can say to you is <laughs> we are definitely going to be wrong on that one. Um, <laughs> Mr. German, Mr. German has been saying an awful lot about Apple preparing a pre recorded iPhone 14 and Apple Watch Series event, and also Apple uh, considering an updated HomePod mini alongside a new high end, high end HomePod, which I've heard lots and lots of rumors about. But again, I'm afraid. It's just a mystery. Just and a mystery. Who, who said that? German. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Not Herman, but German. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Mark German, not that one. <laughs> and that, folks, is the end of this week's Gaz's Snippets. There we go. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. I, you know, we don't get uh, Minji Quo has been quiet. Um, certainly, um, Gene Munster, at, at least as far as the stuff that we cover, has been has been pretty quiet. I, you know, I, I got to have time to use these things, Gaz. Yeah, yeah, but you can't yeah. use them every week. <sighs> <laughs> Can't I really? In fact, I did listen to a bit of um, your show last week, and I, I thought there was a point where you were going to use that. Um, I think that the person or company or governing body putting at risk my ability to be able to choose a secure and reliable environment that I've chosen. So person, company, or governing body, if you want to play that silly game, I, along with I'm sure a lot of other people, will continue to call you nasty, horrible people for putting my security at jeopardy. But I don't think you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I I actually thought about it, but then it was like, you know what, that's – that's Gaz's thing. Oh, you know, right. So, oh, okay. I and don't, what was I don't, worse... I don't want it being used by others. I, well, because I think at this point, everybody knows that person, company, governing body are nasty, horrible people for the okay. most part. True, true. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, unless you got anything else, I think that's it for this for this part of the show, Gaz. I think we really ought to jump into the next section and understand all of the possible options for Apple's future. <laughs> oh, darn it you know sometimes sometimes, sometimes, just sometimes not ready I'm, I'm just not ready <laughs> three days later yes oh, yes every, everyone please stand by for the next part of this train wreck to stand by for the next part of this train wreck and guy and gaz the leaders 
of this train wreck. We'll be right back, won't we, Gaz? Yeah, I'll just shovel some more coal on that train wreck. And welcome, everyone, back to the MyMac.com podcast. In this section, we are going to discuss, not rumors, but potentially the future of Apple. Did you hear that, Gaz? The future of Apple. Doesn't that sound exciting? It's so exciting. I'm riveted. I'm just... Yes. I'm, I'm channeling my inner future thoughts about <laughs> Apple. How, how's it look? How's, uh, how's Linux working out for you? I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think the future of Apple depends on the next leader. Oh, well, that's a good point because that's exactly <laughs> what we're going to talk about. Nice segue right into it. There we you go. See, All right. You see? They don't how many, just call how me many Gaz people for, do we have here? They don't just call me Gaz for nothing. They call me Gaz because it's my name. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get that. <laughs> guy, guy. Guy, um, guy. So the first person on the list, and I think this particular person is the one that a lot of people expect, but I, it's, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's a, a for-sure thing, and that's uh, Air Force One Craig Federighi. Federighi. Feder, that guy. Um, Feder, Federighi, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Craig is a Next guy, so he worked with Steve Jobs at Next, who came back to Apple in 2009, and currently leads Mac's, currently leads Apple's Mac and iOS engineering group, arguably being responsible for the operating systems for Apple's biggest money makers, as well as being one of their more recognizable leaders. How much he knows or has input to the day-to-day -day operations of Apple or, or access to their finances is unknown. After And, you know, here's the thing. After 11-plus years of Apple being run by essentially kind of a money guy, you know, he was, he was you know, Tim Cook is, is best known for being the supply chain guy. Yeah. Uh, is Apple ready to have a CEO who's more of an engineer. That is quite a dangerous precedent to, to move to. Um, I think it possibly would be a good move. I think large organizations have a very rigorous forward planning process and whoever they have got planned. Usually. Usually. Yes. Yeah. But, but they, well, yeah, but Tim Cook was a, a long-term plan. He was put in. Right. Little, well, I'm yeah. thinking back to when Steve Jobs was originally fired from Apple. Yeah, but and you're talking, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah. You, but you're talking 20 years, 20, 30, or, yeah, 25, 25, yeah, 25 years ago, possibly more. 85. More it was 1985. Yeah, there you go. 35 years, you know. Yeah. Companies. Companies have moved on a little bit since then. And I think, you know, there's really? Yeah, some haven't, I know. <laughs> um, and I think there's a lot more planning and they also want these, these guys to move around the organization. But I think you're right. He's probably top of the, top of the standard list, you know. There and he's, and he's also point. compared comparatively young. Yeah. 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 53. I mean, he's a, he's a whippersnapper. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, this next guy, um, I'm not sure that he'd really be second on the list, if I'm totally honest with you, because I don't think he really wants it. But this is Eddie Q. He's 57. Um, he's been with Apple longer than most of the people on the list that we're going to be talking about, um, having joined back in 1989. Um, he helped develop the iLife suite of applications, which I quite liked. Um, I did too. I think, I think set them up for a longer term good set of of apps um the itunes store he set up uh, the app stores for apple's various product lines he's currently the senior vice president of services and has degrees in both computer science and finances so although he's got some good background stuff i it, it strikes me that he's just not 
um, the right person or actually wants it, but we'll we'll have to see on that one. But yeah, he's he always, to me, he's always solid. been kind of a he's background solid. guy. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, he'd be, I think he'd be solid, but that would be it. But he, he'd also be more on the creative side, I think. Um, so, yeah. you know, and that's... When you look at what he's doing now, he's vice president of services, which is arguably mm. Apple's Money fastest maker. growing segment at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, the next one, I until I saw the name, I had no idea who this person was. John Turnus, who is 47. He's been with Apple since 2001. And he's uh, he joined Apple as part of the design team, has been vice president of hardware engineering since 2013. So he's the he's youngest overse- on this list, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's overseen every generation of the iPad as well as most versions of the uh, iPhone and iPods. He's also been a key figure with the move to Apple Silicon, which I think we can agree was a really good move. Yeah, and has a degree in mechanical engineering. But in the research that I did, I didn't see anything in the way of finances as far as what you know his education is, and of course. There's you can't beat on the job experience with a lot of this stuff. Uh, you can have you can have an MBA and still not know how to balance a checkbook. Yeah, but do you know what MBA actually stands for? Yes. What? Master of Business Administration. No, no, no it doesn't. It means mop bucket assistant. <laughs> yeah, they kind of hand those out like. Uh, like Cheerios, <laughs> don't they? Hey, you've got to learn how to use the mop bucket, mate. I'll tell you. Yep. And he is the youngest person on this list, which means that if he was given the job and was doing, because I think um, Tim Cook was 50 or 51 years old when he took over for Steve Jobs, because he's now 61 or 62, Tim Cook. Mm. So if you were looking super long term, 10 to 15 years down the line. Uh, And he would be, and if John would also have some background and and know more about finances than what his background looks like, then he would be a pretty solid choice, I think. Yeah. Um, The next person, I'm really not sure. And I'm going to say a first name wrong because I always say Deirdre. And I know it's not wrong. It's Deirdre or Deirdre or or however they pronounce it. But I always say Deirdre. So Deirdre O'Brien, who's 55, is the Senior Vice President of Retail and People. Um, She's a 30-year veteran for Apple, which surprised me, actually, uh, and has overseen many of the employee-related developments, including diversity efforts, Apple University, talent and recruiting, employee relations, business partnerships. Uh, benefits and compensation uh, an operations management degree and an MBA master of business administration um, that's a, so that's solid it's solid but it doesn't it doesn't excite me and, and again I I don't get the hint that you know she'd be the right person to go for it however what would concern me is um, they just want to put her in that position because of the diversity bit and the fact that she's a woman um that could be a mistake because i'm sure they've got much better potential um uh diverse women people of color whatever uh, different uh, diverse people coming through the ranks um and i know that they're certainly putting many more um, diverse people on the board and many many companies need to do a lot more of that but DJ O'Brien, whenever I've heard her speak, um, um, I, I just don't think she's going to be there. Um, she's going to be the right person to, to go for it. But you well, know- to me, the, the biggest downside to uh, choosing her would be she doesn't seem to have much background in engineering. And well, to me, Tim. when you're talking about well, yeah, but at least he was involved in such a way with supply chain. So you're having to go out and, and find sources for whatever the bits and pieces are for making this stuff. So you're working with the engineers and you're working with the designers to make sure that the stuff that you're getting is going to meet the plans of putting these devices together. 
And I, I just don't, I don't see that. I don't see that with okay. Miss O'Brien. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Gre- I, I know I'm going to say this wrong. Uh, Greg Joswiak. Jo- Joswiak. I know he's called the Jaws, which is kind of a, a, a joke on, you know, S- Steve Jobs and Steve Woz. Uh, he's senior vice president of worldwide marketing and joined Apple in 1986. Wow. Yeah. He's 58 years old. He's had positions in marketing for nearly every product Apple has produced since then and has a BS in computing engineering. Is that the BS uh, version that I'm going to call it, or is that the proper BS? Version? Bachelor of Science. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah not... <laughs> Not the other BS. <laughs> okay. Okay. So who knows? You know, I, I, who knows? I, who knows? He yeah. could have lied. You know, I know. Yeah, I, know. I think Greg Wozniak is um is a possibility, but he's an outsider, and I think he's in terms of his age and you know he's yeah. got the, the right. I, I just don't think you know because we don't know when when or if Tim's going to obviously step down. I, you know, it's going to be yeah. a few years. So you and know, why I choose someone who just would be there for a year? I think or two. they will definitely. I. Th- you know, I think it'll probably be someone who's a lot younger and it'll likely be someone who's not even on this list. But at this point in Possibly. time, yeah. I think this is the best group of people that could step into that position. Um, and the next person is Jeff Williams, who's 59. Um, he joined Apple in 1998 and became VP of operations in uh, 2004 was appointed COO in 2015 has played a role with the iPod iPhone and led worldwide operation for those products. Um, he's also BS in mechanical engineering <laughs> and he's got an MBA. So um, yeah, I mean, if he was five to six years younger, mm. I think this would be that Mr. Williams would be the obvious choice. Okay. But I think at the age of 59, that, you know, I just don't think a company like Apple is best served with someone who's only going to be in a role for a year or two, maybe three or four. They're looking for someone who's who's going to steer the ship for a lot longer. And yeah. I, I just don't yeah. see Jeff Williams at 59 being able to do that. But he has all the right pieces. And is there any more? Yeah, there's, I'm sorry, that's right. I'm supposed to go next. <laughs> Space modulator. <laughs> Uh, Sab, 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 Sabi, Sabi Khan, who is 55, started as an applications development engineer with Apple in 1995 and has since become senior vice president of operations for Apple's global supply chain. That doesn't that sound familiar? Mm. Has degrees in mechanical engineering and economics. Hmm. Hmm. Scratch his chin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Samir, uh, Samir Khan, I think, is, you know, uh, an outsider, uh, certainly an outsider. But, um, um, well, I mean, he's been some... with Apple for 30 years yeah, or 20, yeah. 25 and that, years. And I think that may be something which um, I do like the fact that they, they, you know, they've stuck with people who have been in the company for a long time, but who've got, you know, the wide ranging experience. But, um, and I think they'll stick with that. And I think they'll stick with people who've gone through the bad times with Apple as well, because they very much still are a company that wants to make sure the future has a longer term period than just the next five or 10 years. They're not, yeah. you know, Apple are not about just making the short term buck. They want to make a long term buck. Uh, and I think that will continue for sure. Yep. And Mr. Khan, who's joined with the company in 95, went through. Yeah those lean times yeah, with Apple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, I think the biggest plus is there's a couple of, of things that just seem to check all the right boxes for me. Uh, number one, he's, he's dealt with the global supply chain, which, mm-hmm. you know, that's how Tim Cook kind of got his going too. And he has degrees in mechanical engineering and economics of everyone that's on this list. He, to, to me, uh, I, I know I'm saying his name wrong. Sabi Khan. Own it. Has, own it. Own it. Just okay. own it. Right. His name is Sabi. And if it isn't too bad, You're that's what I just it. said. You're not owning it. That's his name. That's his name. <laughs> I, I have declared that that is his name. Sabi Khan has 
all of the right pieces. He's he's been with Apple for a long time. Uh, he knows the supply chain. He's a mechanical engineer, and he also has a background in economics. And that makes him in my and he's only fifty five. In my mind, that makes him probably of all the people on this list, the strongest candidate to fill a position similar to uh, Tim Cook, who granted isn't Mr. Excitement, but has done has done a has done a a, a really he good steered, job at steering Apple for the last ten years. He steered the ship. He steered the ship well, and has but- done very well with it. But you know, I think I think from I, I think Tim mentioned this possibly on the two hundredth show. Um, you know, where's the excitement coming from in products moving forward? And I think that is something which, um, you know, is possibly something which is missing from not only Apple though. I think that's missing from a lot of tech companies. I think yeah. I've said this over the past two or three years that what is the next bit of tech excitement that's coming our way? And I, I, I can't see it at the moment. I can't see Well, that's it. why you need guys like Craig Federici and Eddie Q. Yeah, I agree. Who, who can agree. come out and do, like, I mean, really, you watch these presentations from Apple, and Tim Cook comes on, and he's got his hands clasped together, and yeah. he's like, we yeah. have got some great stuff to show you today. And nearly everyone who's watching is going, okay, Tim, just introduce Craig and let's get on with it. Just introduce you know? anybody. Just, and let's just get introduce on. the next person who's going to talk because we are not thrilled at all with what you're saying. <laughs> and it's, yes, things yes. are really, really exciting here at Apple. I just no, can't no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop there. You were being far too exciting. When oh, you sorry. Said it that way. Oh, slow wait, it down. You I got, no, no, it down. I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it. Got it. Things are very exciting here at Apple. And... I know you will give the next person a great big hand. <laughs> For those not watching uh, the video, guy <laughs> held up in front of the screen a piece of, well, basically A4 and just read off. Yeah. <laughs> Though I didn't actually say that. I was making it up as I went along. <sighs> Shocker. Would you agree with that? Would you Shocker. agree with that, Gaz? <laughs> He's nodding his head. Hit it. Gaz's tips, mostly. Gaz's tips, mostly. Gaz's tips. It's time for Gaz's tip. Right, I'm going in for a Mac tip here. Um, now, the you know the um, the two little switches on your menu bar. You know, one which is like uh, black underneath and with a white uh, round circle, and one which is clear with a black circle. It's on your menu bar on your Mac. Um, I think they call it the settings icon. Um, well, if you click on that, um, uh, then click the display, you can quickly then, Guy, turn your dark mode on or off. Now, I know people like to use dark mode in certain circumstances and at certain points, and you can set it up so that it comes on at certain points of the day, I'm pretty sure. But this is just a quick and easy way to be able to get in there and turn dark mode on or off. Another tip, though, I'm not done. I'm not done. This is something which actually has wound me up on numerous occasions. Probably from my window days, I would r- click on a file name or a file to rename it. And then I'd click again when I'm on the Mac. And sometimes it would then highlight the, the name of that particular file and I could rename it. But very often I'd find myself clicking and it wouldn't do it. Folks, just hit the return bar, your return key, and it highlights the name. And you can basically rename, r- write the new name of that file, hit the return key again. Hey, voila, it's done it for you. So highlight the file that you want to rename, hit your return key, rename it, hit the return key again, and you're done. Yes. I'm there nodding my head, so much guy. head. Oh, I, I couldn't see it because I was nodding my Head. Head. Hit it. That's the end of Gaz's tips. That's Most the end of Gaz's tips. That's Most the end of Gaz's tips. Is that the, uh, the end of the tip? Will you let me finish? Gaz, you are absolutely right. Ah! <laughs> Did you notice 
I guess you didn't watch you didn't watch the video from last week. Obviously, so no, few people no, do. No, no. When I watched, we got to I watched the a end, few, I watched a few of the short ones. I, I think that's a good idea. I like doing those. Um, when we got to the end of Gaza's t- uh, tips, and I was doing that, you know, the quick getaway and Bronk and Gaz are absolutely right. And when I got to the flash, ah, uh, ah, uh, both Carl and I at the same time were like. Oh, <laughs> very good. So silly. So very silly. Um, no picks this week. We, I thought we had some feedback and what, but when I looked in Skype, I think they were all those nasty, nasty solicitors who just leave like a click or two as a message and then go away. Well, if they leave any message at all, even if it's a click, you should play it because it's feedback. Okay. Well, here it is. Click. Well, that was it. That's all we got. I think that's pretty positive. I'm five stars for that. Five Five stars stars. for that click. (laughs) (laughs) Would click again. Okay. Uh, For pick's sake, uh, timeouts list for Ukrainian donation sites. The Ukrainian Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders are all and there'll be links in the show notes. There are all excellent ways that you can help support the Ukrainians in their time of need with everything that's going on over there. Still. Um, still. 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 Uh, yeah, no feedback, gosh. which I just said, so we're going to move on from that. Yep. Uh, if you would like to help support the show, it makes me laugh every time I say this. If you would like to help support the show, you can easily do so by going to my Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Mac Pettit. You can go to coffee, ko-fi.com forward slash Mac Pettit, or you can pay a pal, paypal.me forward slash Vertchart. Sorry, Mac Parrot. And I have a quick rant against GoDaddy. They have truly pissed me off, Gaz. Oh, dear. Vert Shark, the website, is currently oh. down. It's down. Vert oh, Shark dear. is. Yeah. <laughs> I went to get an SSL cert, which would allow me to use HTTPS instead of HTTP, because if you go to a site that doesn't have it, you get a little warning saying that the site isn't secure. Instead, through their stupid menu system, it, it gave me some kind of ridiculous web checkup thing for $128 and I have no SSL cert. And so I go to GoDaddy.com, their online thing, and their bot just keeps going, oh, it's going to be six to seven minutes before someone can talk to you. And then six to seven hours goes by and I still haven't been able to talk to anybody and the site is still down. So they sold me something I didn't want, didn't give me what I did want, and now I can't talk to anybody to try to fix it, and my site is down. Thank you, GoDaddy. I appreciate that. This show is not sponsored by GoDaddy. <laughs> I've never liked GoDaddy, but that's a personal thing. You know, let's move on. I have, let's move okay, on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to move on from that. Uh, Gaz, <laughs> oh, if people wanted to contact you, how would they do it? Ever so easy, guy. Basically, you have to either get your phone or get your iPad or sit in front of your computer or your Mac and then open up the email client of choice and then write in the to section of that email client of choice when you're creating a new email. Gaz, that's G-A-Z. Mm, guys. <laughs> at I'm following my- along at mymac.com and then in the subject line put lots of feedback for you Gaz G-A-Z cars and then write lots and lots and lots of words in the subject not in the subject in the content in the body yeah and that's not necessarily words that would normally be strong no no you can write any sort of words any sort of words you like Um, or you can send we're not picky you can send me a direct (laughs) message on Twitter twitter.com forward slash Gazmas G-A-Z Yes. You can also contact uh, both Guy and Gaz on the Twitters, twitter.com forward slash Guy and Gaz. G-Y-A-N-D-G-A-Z. And I think we've got the longest ever into the Zencast <laughs> theme on that Maybe. instance. You Maybe. can also send an email to feedback, F-W-E-D-B-A-C-K, at mymac.com. 
Moment. Okay. Okay. So, let's move. Okay. His name was Guy. Mm. 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 I have my signal. Unleash hell. That's that what's was... happening to my brain right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I thought. Guy. Guy. You remember Guy? Yeah, I remember Guy. You're Guy. You're you're Guy. It's you. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Still Guy. Still Guy. Still guy. Just who is this guy? No idea. No idea. No. But if you want an email from Guy without no fooling, how would they do it? Oh, oh. oh. okay. Breath is now caught. All you would have to do is open the email client, which Gaz talked about earlier. So I won't say it again, even though me saying that makes it just as long as when he did it. Guy at mymac.com or vert shark sorry podcast at vertshark.com i would normally say you could go to my website which is vertshark.com and see all the stuff that's been posted on vertshark.com but unfortunately godaddy is holding my website hostage yes yes they are Move on. Um, Get over moving it, moving on. Okay. Okay. You can also reach me on the Twitters. I am both Mac Pettit and Vert Shark ah! over there on the Twitters. Uh, there's the Vert Shark YouTube channel where you can see all of the vids. They're, they're all over there, just not on the VertShark.com website. It's not there. <laughs> not there, GoDaddy. So. We also have a Skype telephone number, which apparently a lot of scammers used while we were away. And that number, if you're not a scammer, is one or plus one seven zero three four three six nine five zero one. That number again is one or plus one if you're not a scammer seven zero three four three six nine five zero one. Or take that one and that plus one, send it to a scammer. Let them try it that way. Go right to the Skype application and just dial 703-436-9501. One. One. And I would like to say to everyone watching this show, number one, thank you for your patience. While we've dealt with sickness and vacations, <laughs> we, we, that should have been the name of the show this week, sickness and vacations. But we're back. And we'll probably be on next week, probably. probably. And I would like to say thank you. Thank you to each and every single one of you for awesome. joining us here. You are awesome. You're all so awesome for joining us here on the MyMac.com podcast. It is My Mac. podcast. greatly appreciated. And Gaz, I would like to say that I think, especially this week, this week, no show is better than this, the next. Um, um, what can you say? There, I don't know. I think, I think I can say that we were good enough this yeah. week. And that this week we were smart enough. And that once he had a rest, Wolf, 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 did a lot of walking. And that people like us. Blimey. The yeah, Kutazibiriza. Kawafi, nice. Ku Annie, <laughs> Anabira, Omakula Bizi, Wa Apple, Mu Bizira, Mboyumia, Masu Kusinga, Amuntu, Mula, Mula, Yena Neda. Wow, that was hard work. Well said. Well <laughs> said, guys. Guy, guy. Yeah. How do you get a good price on a sled? I don't know. You have to to bargain. <laughs> so bad. End.
<laughs> so you can all go home and there's nothing to worry about. Get out of here now. Go on. Go on home and I... I go home. 